are going to start with a game of Would You Rather, movie okay. style. Mm -hmm. Would you rather play a superhero or a villain? Villain. Superhero. Would you rather do motion capture or wear a ton of prosthetics? A ton of prosthetics. Motion capture. Would you rather sign a thousand movie posters or spend ten minutes on a red carpet? Ten minutes on a red carpet. Ten. A thousand minutes on a red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> if signing posters is that bad? Nah, well, carpal tunnel. Yep. Very we have that problem with the computer. And Again. also my signature isn't really, I mean, it doesn't, it's not a thing. It's like, it morphs. It's not real. So basically I could like scribble on a piece of paper and yeah. sell it on eBay? Sell that shit on eBay. Call yourself Rosa. Putting ideas Call yourself me. <laughs> uh, you can totally steal my identity. When I don't come back next year because I'm rich and just like retired, <laughs> yeah. that's what I've done. Would you rather have the opportunity to do as many takes as you'd like or have to nail it in one shot? That's tough. Nail it in one shot. Nail it in one shot. Would you rather play an existing, pre play a pre-existing character or one created from scratch? One created one from scratch. One created from scratch, yeah. Would you rather work with 20 angry PAs or one angry director? One angry director. <laughs> one angry director. <laughs> oh my god. That is my the favorite The PAs question. are the glue. <laughs> <laughs> they are the glue that <laughs> Would you rather stand in a super long line for one big panel or go see a bunch of smaller ones? Uh, I would stay home. <laughs> I would be. I would go to. Um, I would go to Comic Con Barbados, and I would stand in line there. That's been. You know, it is kind of nice out there, though. Where they're camping it out. If it's a sunny day, you're. you're fine. I gotta move, though. I, I gotta. I gotta be. I can't stand. I can't stay static. Understandable. So maybe the many different panels. So I had the opportunity to see the first 30 minutes of the movie, and there are some pretty big changes, one of which is that people's agendas seem to be a little more clear-cut right from the beginning of the film, so I wonder, are your characters, like, do we get a sense of what they want early on, or are you still kind of mysterious about it? I think you do. I mean, uh, the tone is set by when they arrive, by how we are treating them. Um, and, I, and I feel like it shifts, obviously, but... Um, it's not just the first in, first impression, it's like, you know, it's a gradual thing, but yeah, I think you do get a sense minute to minute, like, how people's desires and their hope, and like, you know, yeah, I think you get a good... I think it's very clear cut from the outset yeah. what, what Jorge wants, and it, it's so, so well defined in this film, for, for every character. One thing we don't get too much of in the book is backstory on Jorge, so I was wondering, did uh, Wes and James tell you anything about that? Hmm, I would have to say no, um, I, but I, I am sort of a master at creating a backstory. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, all the possibilities, especially with Wes, because he likes to have things filled up, at least for you know, an actor's own uh, personal Process. well to draw from. Uh, so we spoke a little bit about where he may have come from, what the relationship may have been between him. Can you tell me a little bit about working with Wes? Because the guys were telling me that he likes to do a lot of tapes, so I imagine he likes to give a lot of notes, too. Well, it's not necessarily a notes no. thing. No, he trusts his actors. He just wants to get the perfect shot. You know, everything... There are so many moving parts, and there are so many um, things to watch. That You know, he's just trying to get that very... Um, on, like, his vision, he's trying to master that vision in a shot. And that takes sometimes, like... Four takes, and sometimes it takes like 32 takes, and then other setups are like stunt setups where you just it has to hit perfectly, that kind of thing. But um, it's yeah, the stroke it's of a brush. Wes yeah. is an artist, and he's each, an artist, each take yes. is different, and so he's looking also at the frame and visually how things connect in the frame. And something may have worked really well, but just need to be shifted a little bit. He is an insanely mobile camera, especially in the first act of the film. Is that something you guys have to be aware of? Is it a lot about hitting your marks? At some points, yeah, but it's like really Jula Pados, our cinematographer, is like, he's like a ballerina with that thing. I mean, he goes everywhere. He's up on the rig with you. He's running around with you. He's running up to you. He's coming out of a brush. Like, it's, it's their collaboration, you know, and it's also to keep that healthy Maze Runner pace. And it's a dance. It certainly yeah. is a dance, which makes it very fascinating for an actor to dance with a cinematographer, cameraman to dance with him and allow your best self to be seen mm -hmm. uh, for him because he's weaving it out and we have to just be aware of him and he'll come up and just push you out of the way. Oh my god, yeah. He's trying totally. to get to someone else, which is really fascinating. It's good. We did a lot of stunts and he was up on a on a on a tether like just stabilized like this, tethered to the ramp and like shooting around us and I have to like 
slide down and smack my head, about, you know, on this plate glass, and it's like he has to like do all this stuff, and he's just like tethered there, like suspended, you know, and I have to hit it the right way and like land so that he can see me. So it, it is like he said, it like a choreographed. I want to hear about uh, Brenda's hair, actually, because did what you have to do in Insurgent dictate what she looks like here? Um, in a way, but I auditioned with a wig on, you know, like a long wig, and I don't think it was like the perfect looking wig, but um, I had met Dylan the night before I tested for Scorch Trials, and when we met up, I had a shaved head, and um, so I, I went into the audition with a wig on, and then he was like, this isn't right, and he like took the wig off, and he's like, I want her to do it like this, like this is this is how I know her and like it looks badass and it looks sexy like let's do it like this and then it kind of like sparked a cool thing in West where he's like yeah and like you know he's a highly visual dude so for him to sign off and that was like a big thing but in a way yes I had to have like a shaved sides for Mohawk for the insurgent you know but I it was my choice to uh, shave it all off and I'm just lucky that it worked out but also it really fits Brenda's sort of like very like pragmatic approach to survival. It's like she doesn't want all this like hair flapping around in the breeze, you know, getting caught in something. You know, out of curiosity, whose idea was it to make you wear a wig during the audition? Was that like a, I think a it was thing like you a, had to do? I think it was like uh, like a. Didn't, I think maybe it was the casting director, um, but I just sort of rolled with it because I was like, um, I want them to get the vision that they want, and like if this is what they want, then that's what I'll do because I'm so intent on playing this part, but. I love that it show it like bonded me and Dylan in that instant when he did that and I was like, Whoa, like there's a trust here, like this is awesome and I think really that's what translated, not just like him taking the wig off my head. Have you had any crazy encounters with fans who are like, Brenda has long hair? Oh How my god, dare yeah. You? It's it's like the most trivial aspect of any person. Um, but people are so intent because in the books, you know, everything's in the book, in the book, in the book, but they are two different entities. They are the same story, but they're completely different, you know. Uh, in, in, in like a lot of ways, it's the same core essence, but it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, there's no like key plot points that they need to hit about Brenda's hair, so. And now before we have to wrap up, please tell me you're going to be an Allegiant a little more than you were an Insurgent. I'm not going to be an Allegiant at all. <laughs> Why not have that character die then? Like in the book. I don't understand. And now we wanted to ask. Uh, clearly, I'm very. I'll, you know what I'm, I'm very torn them. up about this. <laughs> I know. I'm more than me. <laughs> and now, before we have to wrap, to I wanted to ask you about Gus in Breaking Bad. When you first signed on for the show, how much did you know about where he was heading through the through the seasons? I went into Breaking Bad as a guest star to do one episode, uh, basically because I they had chased me for the show and I finally said yes. And I went to do one episode and they asked me to do one more at the end of the second season and I said yes to that. And then they said, well, if we wanted you to come back in the third season, would you do it? I said, well, you have a four months hiatus, so why don't you come to me then? I don't know. I would only do it if I could be part of the family of filmmakers. They had no idea. They thought that Gus would be around for a couple of episodes. They'd kill him off and be a good bad guy. That's how their bad guys rolled in that show. But I knew that after I did two episodes that there was an opportunity. If they wanted to, to meet for that and take that opportunity with me, um, that would be great. And they did. And Vince has such a great vision. But um, I also thought I had great ideas uh, stemming from the inspiration that I got from his writing. And it was really one line. It was hiding in plain sight. You know, he wrote a stage direction, hiding in plain sight. And I, I just went, wow, how many people in our world hide in plain, in plain sight that we know, but they're not really who we think they are. That's what made him so uh, evil and even more mysterious is that he's like right there. In Absolutely, front of you. right in front of you. Stand, yeah. up, stand up human being, gives him a fun run. Gives business to the police owner. Lead, business owner. Family man. Family man. And, uh, and so Vince got excited about that, and I did it as well. I didn't know anything about the character. I don't think they did it either. And it was just the sort of the, the rapport that was established between Vince and I. And also, even more importantly, the, the synchronicity that was going on between me and Brian. We just had a great relationship. It was just a great relationship. You know, acting is, is you know, being who you are, but oftentimes when you're with a really great actor, you start to do what they're doing as opposed to just staying steeped in who you are. And when Brian and I got together, he was steeped in who he is, and I was steeped in who I was, and it was just bang, sparks, and that's what that great acting is. So inspirational to hear that.